Karen Valencic here. I am here to do a book review today of Leadership in Turbulent Times by Doris Kearns Goodwin. She is an awesome writer. This book was just a really great read to me. So if you're interested in American history and leadership, I highly recommend this. And it um, was a quick, easy read for me. And you can tell by the, um, all the notes I made that it's a, it's a keeper. I'm going to share with you the four traits that I see in common with all four of these presidents, and that's Lincoln, both Roosevelt's, and Johnson, how they led in turbulent times, and what you can do in terms of your leadership to incorporate those. The author, Doris, she, she divided this book up into segments, where she first shared a bit about each of these presidents' childhood, and then some of the tragedies and challenges that they had midlife that really formed and created their character and skill uh, for when they were president during really tumultuous times. And then she shared about their presidencies. So I want to touch on all of those, but I tell you, I'm, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a really quick overview and certainly not a substitute for the richness in which she shared. But I like looking at things in patterns. And I, I think it's interesting to note that of these four presidents, and so again, we're talking about Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, and Lyndon Johnson. Two of them died in office, and that would be Lincoln and Roosevelt. Then there were two, actually, that went on after their presidency and really struggled. Those two are Teddy Roosevelt. He planned to be a one-term president and actually groomed Taft to take his place. And then after he was out of office, he decided he wanted to be back in and ran on a third party ticket, but he never really got back it to the level of politics that he wanted. The other one that, that struggled after his presidency was Lyndon Johnson. And while he was just amazing with his domestic agenda, the Vietnam era came up and he, he wasn't quite a strong leader in international relationships as he was domestically. And, it, and that kind of, was a shadow over him for the rest of his life, according to this book. Now, the other two, you know, there were two of these presidents who actually were reluctant vice presidents. And they felt like they were doing career suicide being a vice president because there, there was really nothing there for them other than that office. And, that, and actually, but both of them, and that would be Teddy Roosevelt, he became president when McKinley was assassinated, and Lyndon Johnson became president when Kennedy was assassinated. So they were two reluctant vice presidents. So the challenges and tragedies that they experienced. A lot of us know that Abraham Lincoln suffered a, tr a tremendous amount of loss he had such vision and had such a heart for wanting to help people, but he had tremendous losses over a number of years in politics. And it was actually quite a miracle that he even became elected, and it may have been because there were multiple people running. Again, read the book for the details. A lot of people around him were concerned that he was suicidal, and so they kept a, a sharp look on him. Teddy Roosevelt. He's probably the president I knew the least about, but Teddy Roosevelt, when he was in politics in New York, his first wife died in childbirth on the same day that his mother died, and it really hit him hard. And he actually left New York and went to the Badlands in the Dakotas and had a ranch there and just spent time healing from his loss. And I believe, and she doesn't go into this there, but I believe it was his love of nature that when he was president, he formed the national park system. And then Franklin Roosevelt, of course, he had polio. Well, I say of course. I knew he was handicapped, but I didn't know the great details. And he got polio from swimming, actually, and long before he ever became president. That sent him on a huge journey to heal himself because he was so driven to be able to get up and walk and he was so driven by politics and the, in the country as well. Franklin Roosevelt really learned how to heal and how to have that patience and perseverance to move on. 
Lyndon Johnson was from Texas and he was a very strong leader in small groups and one-on-one. -on -one. He also was very challenged with a lot of political losses as well. He spent a number of years in the House of Representatives miserable and didn't feel very effective because he, it was such a large group of people, he felt ineffective in his ability to influence in that group. When he became a senator, he really came to life because he, he really had that personality that could deal and wheel and connect with small groups of people. Okay, so about their presidencies. You know, Lincoln is known for coming together and bringing in a team of rivals for his cabinet. And he knew he needed to do that because the country was so divided that he knew he needed to have diverse people to support what his plan was. And his approach, he was a very empathetic leader. So he spent a lot of time and energy listening to his adver adversaries and having a lot of dialogue and empathy with where they were coming from. So he was very committed to that. And he was also committed to his vision of the Emancipation Proclamation. And he never wavered from that, although several of his cabinet members were suggesting it. By the time that they put that forth, all of his cabinet members were behind it. So he was able to bring all those diverse opinions to an agreement and they never wavered from it. That was quite the artistry of communication and relationship building. Teddy Roosevelt was the early 1900s and the turbulent time that he had is the, the coal, there was a coal strike. So the union and management were at odds with each other and couldn't, couldn't come to the table at all with each other. And he was the first president that sat with the question is does the federal government get involved with private industry? And he waited, he was very much a patient man and he wanted to make sure he wasn't going in and pushing his agenda, but he waited. And what finally made him decide to enter into that, which he did very artfully through relationship again, he did it because the American people and both individually with heat in their house and with industry being able to continue to to move forward and produce were really in danger because of the, the lack of ability to come to agreement. So he was the first president that became involved the federal government with private industry, which was very difficult. Then Franklin Roosevelt, he came to presidency three years into the Great Depression, and that was 1933. He followed Herbert Hoover who, from my understanding, was pretty ineffectual as a leader when that crisis happened. And Franklin Roosevelt really knew how to connect with people and how to be empathetic. His goal was to connect and assure people that everything was gonna be okay. And he started the program, I think the first thing he did was to start the Corps of Engineers where he, he had young men go out and have jobs where they created parks and the park, you know, the rest areas and all of that. And he put people to work on programs that needed, were work that needed to be done. And then of course, World War II entered the scene, which is really what brought us out of the depression. He served for four terms and died near the end of his fourth. He was very much a man with his ear on the ground. His wife, Eleanor, had her feet on the ground, but he really wanted to hear from people. He was very empathetic and he knew, um, he knew what healing took because just like he needed to heal from polio, he knew the country needed to heal to get back on its feet. So he was very much prepared to be the right person at the right time. Lyndon Johnson, as I said earlier, he was much a master of small negotiations in smaller groups and so when Kennedy was shot, he really had to pick himself up by the bootstraps and become a leader to the masses. And he knew that and he, he worked really hard. He went beyond everything to be able to come out with a speech that would reassure the American people that, that we would move forward, that we were, we're a forward moving country. And again, appealing to empathy and people's hearts with that. Now, 
Kennedy at the time, his agenda in the in Congress was not going forward. And it was a great opportunity for Johnson to be able to get tax cuts and the civil rights packages through Congress. And he really, he paced himself. And he knew the tax reforms were the first thing to do. And then he moved into the civil rights. And he did incredible work domestically for equality and freedom and voting rights. Where Johnson didn't do so great was in the Vietnam era. And unfortunately, he did not live long enough to see how the peace treaties that he, he tried to initiate came to fruition. He died before that. The four leadership traits that all four of these had in common that I think that you as a leader and myself as a leader can use right now is number one, they were all very empathetic. They communicated in a way so that they understood what their what what people were going through, what their adversaries were going through, and they really took the time to listen and to understand and be with people where they were. And that was a mark of all of all of them. The second thing is they were um, masters of timing. Um, each one of them knew that they couldn't come in and push forward an agenda. They had to wait for the right timing with the people and the circumstances to come forth. So they were patient and looked for that timing. The third thing is they were very conscious of the difference between transformational and transactional leadership. They knew this, and what do I mean by that? Transformational leadership would be like Lincoln. Lincoln, the transformation is that every person should be free and to free the slaves. That was the, that was the transformational leadership aspect. The transactional was the fact if you abolish slavery, you put the South at odds of winning the old war because they no longer had all those people that were fighting for them. So there was a transactional and transformational. And I'm not going to go through what the other presidents did, but you will see it as you read this book. So the last thing is they were all good storytellers. They knew that in order to connect with people, they needed to be great storytellers. It sounds like Lincoln was an incredible storyteller and, a, a, and much of a humorist, but they all used story to connect with the people that they led. That's it. So again, this book is Leadership in Turbulent Times by Doris Kearns Goodwin, and I highly recommend it. And I'm Karen Valencic. I appreciate you stay, staying here with me. And I am the author of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace, which is all types of skills, exactly what we're talking about with leadership. So that's it. Thanks for hanging in here with me. And please subscribe and like this if you liked it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.